Hello and welcome to another video by me, Joe Unwin, also known as Flojo. Today we are going to be looking at the Copilot Studio and how you can actually make a Copilot for your business. Now this is going to be an introductory video, so it's going to streamline a lot of the processes, but we're actually going to create a Copilot that you can actually use. And I'm going to use my blog as an example of this. We're going to use fallbacks. We're going to use adaptive cards. We're going to use custom topics, generative AI, all of the works that you can actually use in Copilot. And we're going to do this now. So let's take a look at Copilot Studio then. So this is what happens um, when you open the Copilot Studio Maker. You're going to see home on the left hand side, copilots, plugins, prompts, models, all of these type of stuff that you can work with. Now we're not going to go into all the detail about all of this information. What we're going to do is we're just going to start directly by creating a copilot. So when you create a copilot, what you're going to see is you're going to see it's going to ask for a name. It's going to ask what language you want it in. And it's all going to also going to have this boost your conversations. Now this generative answers section is generative AI. It's going to allow you to place a website in here that will allow it to get information from that site, generate a response, and then provide it back to the user. Sounds great, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to call this flowjoe.io um, copilot. And then I'm going to put my site in here. So if I go to my site, this is what I'm going to be using. So I'm just going to copy the URL and I'm going to paste it into here. Now, this allows me to use all of my website as well as the um, sub uh, folders in the site. So any uh, sub pages, so flowjo.io slash powerfx, flowjo.io slash powerautomate, all of that is going to have access to all of that information and it's going to generate responses and bring it back. So if I click create now, what that's going to do then is it's going to spin up the copilot that I'm creating. It's going to add the website that I've just entered into the generative answers section so that if someone asks a question that I don't have a phrase to capture for. So if I say, um, how do I use power effects right now? Because I've not created anything on my copilot, it's going to go into the generative section. It's going to generate a response from my site and give it back to the user. Awesome. So while that's getting created, let's actually take a look at what we're going to try to create. So this is kind of an outline of what we're going to try and achieve. We've got flowjo.io my blog. Obviously, this will be your site. Then once the copilot is opened, the conversational starts going to kick off. Now this light blue here is a topic. If you do not know what a topic is, a topic is similar to a Power Automate flow. It's a particular item. If you're a developer, think of it like a class, right? That you have a trigger on the top. So the trigger is based on phrases. If you put a lot of phrases in, say, contact, or you say, contact me, contact us, I want to contact Flo Joe. When someone types something like, I want to contact a user. I want to contact an admin or something like that. It's going to go through the process, understand the language that that person's using, and then trigger that particular topic. And then within that, you can actually create nodes, just like Power Automate, you can create um, actions. You'll be able to add nodes to do something. So once that topic is triggered, it's going to go through and do all of the stuff below it. But with conversation start, this is a system trigger. Now this goes in and triggers as soon as the copilot opens. So it's going to deliver a welcome message. And that welcome message we can modify. And I'll do that momentarily. I'll show you how to do that. But what we can also do on the welcome message is add quick replies. Now these work pretty much like prompts. If you've ever used ChatGPT or anything like that, and you've seen the prompts there, you can click on a prompt and it will auto type that particular prompt for you. And then it will just be like you've typed it in yourself. So you can make suggestions to the user um, on what they're trying to look for. Let's say you were um, a shoe store and you were trying to sell white shoes. You was trying to push white shoes to your customers. You could have 
white shoes as a prompt. So they click on that and then it brings back all the information about the white shoes in your store. Well, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to grab some of the headlines of some of my blog posts and put them in here like PowerFX if function, for example, because Copilot Studio actually uses PowerFX just like Power Apps. So if you've ever used Power Apps before or you've used Power Virtual Agents before, you will be able to use all that knowledge that you've uh, gained from PowerFX within uh, Copilot Studio. And then we're going to actually create, create those um, quick replies uh, as prompts. So that's what the orange one's here. But if the user decides not to use a prompt and then just types a question, it's going to go into the all other conditions. But what this allows us to do then is, as I mentioned previously, if you type something that you don't capture, i.e. you don't have a trigger for, it's going to go into the conversational booster topic. Now, what that does then is it does a generative AI call based on the website that you've provided. So I provided flowjo.io. That is then going to grab the information, generate a, uh, generate a response and pass it back. But what you can actually do is you can add multiple sites. So I can add flowjo.io, but let's say I want to keep people on my site, but still have access to all of the information on the Microsoft Docs site. Um, I don't really make a lot of content for Power BI. So let's say I wanted to have Power BI information come back as well. I could actually pass through the link to that particular site and then it will do a fallback. So it will search my site. No, nothing there. Okay, fine. Let's go to the next site. Great. We've got this information. Let's bring it back. Let's display it to the user. And the person remains on your site, but has access to all of this additional information. It's great, right? But... Let's take a look at this then. We've got the learn.microsoft.com um, domain and we've got slash uh, en dash us. So it's the US version. And then we've got slash power dash platform. Now you can only go two layers deep. So you can only go two folders deep or two levels deep if you're not familiar with FTP. Essentially, you've got the URL and then you've got one layer and then you've got another layer you can't filter out any more layers further down. So what that means is that if I want to have access to everything on learn.microsoft.com in the EU uh, English uh, US URL, then I could just take all of that. But if I want to specify that it's only for the Power Platform, I can do that. But I can't then go an additional layer in. Let's say um, I click Power Automate documentation. I've now got EN dash US slash Power Automate. That would work, but then if I go one further and just say, okay, I only want the information from getting started uh, logic flow section, that won't work because it's the third layer deep. It won't be able to um, just filter down to that level. So I have to provide it with just the Power Automate section, which means anything below that will come back, but I can't stop anything below that coming back. Does that make sense? Slightly confusing. Okay, so let's take a look at it from another point of view. You've got your URL, you've got one layer, so that in this instance is English US, and then you've got another layer, in this instance it's Power Automate. Everything under that is going to be brought back by this URL, as well as that, obviously, that domain as well. But if you wanted to say, let's go another layer deep and another layer deep, just to bring back that information and ignore all the stuff above it, you can't do that at the moment on Copilot Studio. However, there is um, a Bing custom search that you can use. I'm not going to go into that today. And you can um, kind of just uh, block out specific URLs if you wanted to. So let's go back to our visualization then. So if someone says something um, that we don't have a trigger for, it's going to go into the conversational uh, booster, it's going to use generative AI, and then it's going to use that information, and um, then it's going to pass the generative AI response back. However, I'm going to also create a manual topic to show you how these work. Now, manual topics are topics that you fully control that don't generally use generative AI. You can use generative AI in your manual topic, but for this instance, we're not going to. What we're going to do is we're going to create a contact topic. We're going to use an adaptive card to capture a name, email, um, and the message. 
And then we've just got the uh, send an email here, but we're not actually going to do this section. You could like pass this information up to Power Automate, etc. But I'm just going to show you how you can actually capture this information and then you can do whatever you want with it. So all in all, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be creating a copilot that has a welcome message. It's going to have some prompts. It's going to use generative AI to gather information off of a site um, or many sites. And it's also going to have a contact information section. Now, this is a relatively small scope uh, copilot. But as I said, this is kind of like an introduction, right? But you can add more and more and more topics on top of this. You can use this as like a base layer and also you can um, then extend all the prompts and etc. So this is a very good starting point, especially if you've never worked with creating your own chatbot or copilot before. Okay, so this is the visualization. What I'll do is I'll actually uh, create a blog post on my site and put that visualization on there so you can follow it if you wanted to follow this through and do it yourself. Um, and let's see where our copilot is. Okay, so we have a um, we have a chatbot copilot created now, right? So it comes through as this is the chat. Okay, it's a bot. Is it a copilot? What's the difference here then? Well. We've got generative AI in this now, right? So I haven't actually created any topics, but I do actually have topics created. These are out of the box topics and there's lessons here. Now you can turn these off, but what I do is for my best practices is I delete these lessons straight away because I don't want them going up to production, accidentally getting uh, turned on and then being used in production. So the first thing I ever do whenever I create a copilot is I delete all of these. So then I'm left with goodbye, greeting, start over, and thank you. Now, this greeting isn't the welcome message one. If I open this, you can see that the phrases are good afternoon, good morning, hello, hey, hi. So that specifically is um, just saying a message back saying, hello, how can I help you today? And then it stops. The one that you're looking for is in the system section. Now in the system section, you've got conversation start, conversational boosting, and these are the two main ones we're gonna be focusing on today. The conversational boosting is the generative AI. So let's open that and look. So if you remember me talking about the triggers, if you have a phrase, it will trigger that trigger. Um, and what that will do is then it will go through that topic and then you'll be able to go through all the nodes. But because this says on unknown intent, if you don't have a trigger phrase for something that someone types, such as PowerFX if function, right? It's going to go through, it's going to get the um, information from the input, so whatever someone puts in, and then it's going to pass it through to the data source. It's going to get that information back. It's going to generate a response. It's going to go through multiple layers of filtering to make sure no harmful content comes back and then it's going to pass that back. And then we've got a message being sent. Now, it doesn't actually send it here, it sends it here. So if you open the properties section and scroll down and open advanced, you've got send a message and it says text only. And you can see you can actually save the message as a response. So how this works then is it comes back with links to the sites that you provide. Now, if you want to customize that message even further using such a, things such as PowerFX, you can untick this send a message and use this string um, that comes back, the answer string. You can manipulate that in here with PowerFX, cut it, do whatever you want with it, add um, bullet points, whatever, um, and then send a message manually yourself. But that's a uh, conversational boosting. Let's go back then and see what conversation start does. So if you remember on this section, we've opened the copilot conversation start have opens, and then we get a welcome message. Well, this is the message. And right now it says, hello, I'm bot name, um, a virtual assistant. Uh, just so you're aware, I sometimes use generative AI. You can put whatever you want in here, right? So you could say, hello, um, I'm the flowjo.io. Uh, copilot. Oops. So 
fairly simple, but you could have whatever message you want, but it's really important because this is the first message that someone's going to get uh, when they open the Copilot. So you want it to be enticing, but you don't have to be restricted to one message. If you want it to feel more um, unique and generative and things like that, you can actually press this little speech mark icon up here. If you press that and then you see where it says add, you can add message variations. You can add multiple different variations to that message so that when someone opens it, it may be different to when someone opens it again or a different person opens it and you can essentially get the uh, difference for that. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stop there and go back to um, our Copilot stuff. So this is the design, right? We've got our welcome message, we've got that done. But now we want to add quick replies. We want to add prompts. So let's go over to my site. I've been creating a lot of um, uh, PowerFX videos uh, recently. So PowerFX year function, PowerFX today function. I've got the PowerFX concatenate function. I've got cancel flow runs, all of these type of stuff, right? So if I want to use one that's like very popular, like I know that everyone wants to know how to easily avoid apply to each loops in Power Automate. So if I copy this and I come back into here, you see where I, I could um, do the add previously. Well, at the bottom there's quick reply. So if you click on the quick reply and click add, it's going to say send a message, which we want it to do. We want it to send the message so that it uses a generative AI as if someone was typing it. And then you just enter the text. So if I click off of that and close this, you can see now I've got a button here which says easily avoid apply to each loops. It's been um, uh, it's been taken down because um, we we don't have the wrapping on here. But when you're actually in the chat, you'll be able to see it. So don't worry about that. And then you can add more. So let's add another one that um, from my site. So uh, let's look at uh, one that days between dates on Power Automate, right? So we've got another one here. So all you do is click add, enter the text, and we now have that information. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to add one that I don't have real, like really much information on, and I'm going to get that from the um, Microsoft Docs site. So if I come in here and I click on share a flow, right? So I'm going to copy this, share a cl cl uh, cloud flow. I don't really have much information on my site about that. So maybe someone is going to ask that information. Maybe you've seen it in your Google Analytics that um, a lot of people are asking this information and you want to provide that information, right? So I'm just going to add this now. And now we've got an additional one. Okay, cool. So now we have our welcome message and we've got our prompts already created. It's taken um, a couple of minutes just to change the welcome message, add some prompts, and we've got generative AI working. So let's actually test this out then. So if I hit test copilot, you can see I've got the welcome message um, previous there, but if I hit refresh, it's going to bring the latest one. And it says, hello, um, I'm the flowjo.io copilot. And you can see here, I've got all of my prompts. So if I click on one of these that easily avoid uh, apply to each loops in Power Automate, what that's going to do then is it's going to go off to flowjo.io, find the information on that site, generate a response, pass that back, and then provide a reference link. And as you can see here, you can easily avoid apply to each loops in Power Automate by retrieving the first and or subse uh, subsequent, oh, can't speak, subsequent rows without uh, needing the apply to each action. Um, it gives you the link to it. So if I click on that, it's now got all the information from my site and it's provided uh, a direct link to the blog post that I've created as well as um, people can access the video and obviously if this was embedded onto my site it's just going to follow them through and you're going to be able to interact with the copilot while navigating through my website. Okay so that's great but what happens if I ask um, about 
the particular one I don't really have much information on, share a cloud flow. Well, I know that I want to get the Microsoft um, Docs site on here. So if I click on the generative AI section, this is where all the generative AI stuff happens, right? And you can see the boost conversational coverage with generative answers. I've got my website on there. But what I want to do is I actually want to use um, the Power Automate section. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to say, okay, well, my name's Flo Joe. I want a lot of information about Power Automate. So I'm going to put this URL onto my site so we have more information. So if I add that, you can see now I've got flowjo.io, then I've got the Learn Microsoft uh, information on there as well. Great. So hit save at the top. Make sure you do that because I've done it a number of times where I've clicked off and then I've come back in and realized that um, my site wasn't there. And then let's go back into a topic. Uh, let's go into the conversational start just to have a look. And then let's hit test copilot. So if I hit refresh now, if this one works now that we've added the URL. So if I hit this, um, it will say share a cloud flow. And you can see it says, I'm sorry, I'm not sure how to help you with that because the phrasing that I've used isn't good enough. Um, so what I need to do now is I need to make sure that I have the correct phrasing in the quick reply. So if I open up the quick reply here, and then I open up um, uh, the actual site here. I'm using the Power Automate site, right? So what I can do is I can change the phrasing on this to say, share a cloud flow. Okay, that's very loose in terms of terminology in Power Automate. So then if I save this then, um, I'm going to just be able to run this again and then we're going to have more information to provide through. So now I've got share a cloud flow in Power Automate. So let's see what this does then. Let's see if this actually brings back information. So I'll close the properties section. It's currently going through and it's actually brought back information. What this has actually done then is it's gone to the um, Power Automate section of the Learns Docs site because it hasn't found any information on my site and it's decided, okay, well, this is the best information that I can retrieve, generated a uh, answer and pass that back and then provided reference links to that. So to share a Cloudflow in Power Automate, you have three primary options and then it's listed those in bullet points and it also provides us with the link. So if I open this link, you can see I've got the share a Cloudflow. Now, what's really interesting is I use the title of this but it didn't actually provide me with that information. But if you look, this the um, the actual site is all built up based on Power Platform, Power Automate, Share a Cloudflow. Um, it needs more information uh, to be able to generate the response because it didn't feel confident in the response that it was generating based on the information that I provided. So that's very important to uh, take away when you're thinking about how this is going to work with your users. Okay, so what we've done now then, let's have a recap. We've gone through, we've done the welcome message, we've got the prompts, we've seen the conversational booster happen, we've now got, um, we're not using the Power Platform, we're actually using the um, Power Automate uh, URL, we've got Flojo as well, and we've seen it bring back information from Flojo as well as the Power Automate URL. So we've pretty much made a generative AI co-pilot already with two sources of data. All of the information about Power Automate on the Microsoft Learns docs is fully accessible to anyone on my site using my co-pilot. Um, all of the information on my site is fully accessible to anyone using my co-pilot. I have prompts to allow them to target specific things that I feel that is a top priority. Um, as I said before, a lot of people want to avoid apply to each loops. Um, it's one of my most popular blog posts and uh, videos. So I can have that as one of my main prompts and thinking about your prompts definitely determines um, on what you're trying to achieve, right? If you're a e-commerce store and you're trying to uh, push sales, then you're going to kind of have prompts to steer them towards a sales-esque uh, route. But if you're 
a more informational person or an informational site like myself, then you're going to have um, informational prompts to do that. And then what I do is I look at my analytics for my site, see what the top posts are, um, see what people are visiting uh, a lot, and then I can customize my prompts based on that. But what we haven't done is we haven't handled creating a contact uh, topic, an actual manual topic. So we've got all of this working now. What we're going to do is we're going to go back to the topic section. I'm just going to close the test pilot section. And at the top here, you've got the ad. So you can create plugins, you can create copilot plugins, and you can, if you hover over the topic, you can create a topic from blank or you can create from description. If you click create from description, this is using um, the Copilot Studio Copilot. So what that means is, is Microsoft Copilot Studio actually has its own Copilot built in to allow you to build topics faster. So you just type the name of your topic in here, then you type in what you're trying to achieve. Let's say I want to um, ask a user for their name, email address, and a message. And I want that in an adaptive card. I want to store all that information in variables. And then I want to send an email. You could do that and it will generate it for you, at least the outline layers, and then you can modify it and it'll be very much quicker. But I'm actually gonna go through this uh, process manually just to show you how everything works. So if you go into topic and then from blank, you can see when you first open it, it says untitled at the top. So firstly, you want to name it. So I'm naming my topic contact. And then if you click on these phrases edit here, you can see it's blank, right? And you've got to add phrases. So I'm going to say contact me, uh, contact us. Uh, I want to contact an admin, um, speak to Flow Joe. The phrases are pretty generic, but you should really have these as sentences. But for the example of this video, this will do for uh, what we're trying to achieve. So now we have phrases. So again, how triggers work in a topic. You have a topic of contact. If someone says, I want to contact Flow Joe now, I haven't actually typed that, but it will understand the context. It will understand the contact section. It will understand that they want to speak to Flow Joe, and it will use what the individuals are putting into your copilot, make sense of it, and then decide what topic to trigger. So in this instance, I'm going to trigger a contact topic. If I say I want to contact Flow Joe, for example. But what I want to do is I want to ask for information. Now you can ask a question. If you click ask a question, you can select um, different types of questions, age, uh, the city, color, um, anything. Like you can uh, country, uh, any type of item you want to ask. There's numbers. Um, there's percentages, person's name, phone number, speed, state, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. These are all pre-built, right? Um, but you can just ask for like a string, for example, like a message or whatever, capture their whole message and stuff like that. It's very good um, if you're asking for specific questions, but it's just text and then they reply text. You can actually make it a lot more stylish by using an adaptive card. If you don't know what an adaptive card is, an adaptive card is essentially um, a JSON payload that allows you to um, build a card out that looks a lot prettier to the user. So I've already created a card um, and I'll put this uh, in um, the blog post that I'm gonna do as well. So you can actually modify this yourself. But all I've done is I've just added some text containers. I've got a title here for contact me, um, added a section um, where I'm saying, please provide the details below if you have a question or message and send, uh, and I've got a, like a disclaimer here saying no information will be shared with third parties. And I've just got an image. I've just used the one that I use on my site. And then I've got their name, their email address and message. And these are all input fields and then the submit button. But what I'm actually doing is I'm going to be storing that information um, in variables as well as I've got error handling. But I'm not going to get too uh, uh, much into detail about how adaptive cards work simply because um, 
I uh, have a lot of videos on that and it takes a lot of time to go through and explain. It's a very in-depth topic. But if you're first starting out, just go to adaptivecards.io slash designer and or just Google or Bing search adaptive cards and hit the designer section at the top and they'll have samples there you can play around with and things like that. What's really important to know is Copilot Studio in its current state only supports the version 1.5 and below. So you need to make sure you have 1.5 selected because there are um, there's 1.6 and it doesn't support that. But there are other versions as well. I've just got it selected at Bot Framework Web Chat. And um, I'm getting my visualization and I've got all my elements that I can drag and drop. But what you do once you finish this is you actually copy this payload at the bottom down here. And then you go back to your Copilot Studio, press add a node, and then ask with adaptive card. So it's going to look blank. It's going to have zero outputs. If you double click on this little cog here, it's going to open the JSON. And all you do is you replace that with your own JSON. And if I come back here, you can see I've got a nice adaptive card now asking uh, users to fill out their name, email address, and message. I'm actually capturing the ID of the um, submit button, I'm capturing the email address, I'm capturing the message, and I'm capturing the name. And then what I can do is I could obviously call Power Automate and send an email at that time. But for the purpose of this, I'm just going to send a message saying, um, hi, and I'll put the name. Um, thanks for contacting me just to show that the variables work. Um, okay, so now we've got this done. We've, we've basically created our contact uh, manual topic and it's been that quick, right? So if you've already got um, adaptive cards created, at least a base layer that you can use in multiple places, you can save them. And then when you're working with customers, if you're a consultant or an architect or anything like that, you can actually repurpose your adaptive cards across uh, customers and then just modify them slightly, change the image slightly, you know, all those type of things to do that. Okay, so now let's test our Copilot. We now have our um, welcome message, we have our prompts, we have our generative AI, which um, you saw previously, and we also have our manual topic. Now I'm gonna say contact, Flow Joe. So as you can see here, um, even though I don't have contact Flow Joe in there, it's understood from my context that contact and Flow Joe within the phrases, um, I'm trying to go through the contact section. It's then provided the adaptive card, so I can then just say Joe. Um, I can do um, Joe at flowjoe.io and then hi if i hit submit what that's going to do is it's going to store that information in the um, variables and then i could for example call power automate pass those variables through send an email address uh, send an email to myself um, saying uh, this is what this person um, has said here's their email address and so on but in what I've actually done as an example is I've just created a message saying, hi, Joe, thanks for contacting me. So all I've done is I've passed the variable through into a message just to show you that it's actually working. It's capturing all that information and it can work. So let's go back over what we've done then. Currently, I have my website. If I embed this copilot on my website right now, when someone opens it, I'm going to get the conversation start. So I'm going to get this particular thing here where it says, hello, I'm the Flojo Copilot. That's the welcome message. Then we've got the prompts. So I've just put some example prompts on here, but the actual prompts that we've used are easily avoid, um, apply to each loops in Power Automate, uh, days between dates in Power Automate, and share a cloud flow in Power Automate. And what I did these for is because two of them specifically are on my site and it's going to be bring back information just from my site. Because we go into the conversational booster section, because even though you're using a prompt, 
it's still an unknown intent because we do not have a topic specific to those prompts. However, you can always make that, but we are trying to use a conversational booster topic. So they select a prompt, it goes through, the generative AI call happens within this topic. It uses flowjo.io first, then it uses the learn.microsoft.com URL to gather information if it can't find it. And that's what these prompts were designed to show you is that, yep, this information is on my site. This information is on my site. This information is not on my site, but I didn't provide it with enough information initially. So I've changed that and it's gathering that. So whenever you click on one of these, um, it's going to then go through that generative AI section, go through these websites, find what it deems as the best response, generate that and pass it back to the um, co-pilot. So as you can see here, I clicked the middle one this time. It's talking about the um, differences between dates, um, between two dates. So how many days are there between due dates and how you can do that on Power Automate. And then it links me to my site directly. Um, and I've got that uh, information there, got all the information on my site and the video that someone could watch. So obviously they can then uh, learn about that particular thing. And then what we've also done is we've created a manual topics so that we can actually allow users to contact me um, and we've used an adaptive card to take the input from the user to make it a more enjoyable experience rather than just um, a chat based experience familiar with uh, chat GPT you're just doing text 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 here we're actually providing them with something sty more stylish to capture that information and then we can do um, that particular information uh, populated just high again and then once we've done that we've stored that information in variables and we can do whatever we want with that information such as send an email but what i'm doing here is just sending a message so we've actually created now a uh, building block copilot for a website it has access to all of the information from the Microsoft Docs site it has all the information from the site that is great it would actually sit on which would be my blog and if you're a business or you're working with a customer trying to achieve this for their business then this is a great way um, of building up um, essentially lots of different uh, informational sources but keeping a user on your site and giving them the greatest experience that they can have utilizing the copilot and then we are um, also capturing uh, contact information uh, if they're trying to connect to us and we've got the prompts so as you can see this is easily extendable right you could start with this type of thing and then build out you can build many 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 more uh, manual topics you could build many many more um, prompts you could actually uh, handle specific um, prompts in manual topics as well and you can uh, extend manual topics with the generative AI so if I come back into here you can see um, it's done this generational um, uh, content from the conversational topic that we uh, had a look at uh, before, the conversational boosting topic. Um, you can actually modify what comes back yourself. Let's say um, you wanted to give it a Flojo flair. So every time the generative uh, answers come back, it was like, this is from Flojo, and then said the actual response. You can manipulate that with PowerFX. Now I've not gone into great detail on what PowerFX is and how it works and stuff like that. That's going to be for another video, but I do have a lot of videos on my site that explains um, the different functions of PowerFX. So if you're interested in learning that or you're coming from Power Apps and you're wanting to know how it works in Copilot Studio, then just check out one of those videos. Okay, so we've got a copilot that works, we've got a welcome message, we've got prompts, we've got conversational um, AI, we're actually generating AI uh, messages to deliver back to individuals. We're also handling any questions based on 
two different website sources and we've got contact information. And that is how easy it is to build a co-pilot for your business.